to pander to the interests of the U.S. Or Uganda, the same thing. But when Yoweri Museven took over, and Kenya has all, all along existed as a U.S. colony, mm. so it's like these two countries ganged up against Tanzania. You must remember that even before Dr. Magufuli took over in Tanzania, you, uh, Uganda and Kenya actually officially supported the opposition candidate in Tanzania. Mm. And now, Mr. Mitwal, just uh, in closing, because we are running out of time, uh, Raila Odinga uh, at this point has refused to uh, accept the results, uh, saying um, the vote uh, should not stand. Um, what rights does he have in fighting the vote, consider considering uh, that um, he voluntarily withdrew uh, from the vote? Um, he has rights. Mm. There's always redress mm. when such an illegality happens. Because the, the issues here are the illegality of the IEBC announcing that the elections are free and fair. Mm -hmm. When they are not free and fair, there are so many irregularities in the elections which have been admittedly um, been validated by independent observers. There have been several illegalities. And putting off from the election doesn't mean that the election itself, the poll itself, was free and fair. So he still has some redress. He can seek redress through the courts. But then I'm questioning the, 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 the rationale. Mm -hmm. Who are going to benefit? Because even if he goes to the courts, it's going to take another year in court. And the taxpayer's money is going to be wasted again. So instead of using that money to deliver economic development to the people, we are using the money to fight contestations that don't benefit the people in the end. These contestations are for the U.S. traders, the U.S. oil companies, the U.S. big business. They're the ones who have got vested interests in the East African community. So they are using the ports in East Africa to offshore their wealth from Africa to Europe, to America. So it's the, it's the control of the ports mm. in East Africa. So it, 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 we shouldn't be asking whether Raira should be going to the courts or not. The issue is already there is some tone of resignation in Raila Odinga because he knows how long it is going to take mm. for him to, 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 to get victory in the courts because already Uhuru Kenyatta, you must remember that he has threatened mm. to make some changes in the judiciary. So that already uh, gives us some food for thought. Are, are we going to, to, to take this to fight Uhuru Kenyatta in the courts when he has already said that once he wins again, he's going to fix the courts? Mm. So that already gives us an indication of what is going to happen. He has been adopted as a darling of the Western nations. So he is going to be supported. He is going to be propped up because he has conceded to the Western nations. So he's the darling of the West. Mm. So the chances of Raila Odinga getting victory via the courts are very slim this time. All right. Thank you very much, sir. We Thank have you. to leave it there, unfortunately. Mm. And that was ex expert on Africa matters, Edward Mitole, just giving us more details as uh, Kenya's main opposition leader, Raila Odinga, refuses to accept President Uhuru Kenyatta's victory. And now moving on with more stories in our bulletin, at least five people have been killed, uh, including a police officer in anti-government protests in the Democratic Republic of Congo city of Goma. The protesters are demanding that President Joseph Kabila steps down at the end of the year. Frustrated by the government, protesters barricade roads and burn tires in the city of Goma. This in efforts to voice their anger over President Joseph Kabila's bid to cling on to power. The protest organized by the Association of Civil Society Groups, including the pro-democracy struggle for change, turned deadly. At least five people, including a policeman, have been killed, while several other people are receiving treatment in hospital.
nyakaisa batole poka ya watu kwanza ine kuesta nyakati sasa tulibatunja tukaona mwingine mara moja akakufa the protests come weeks after the country's electoral commission delayed the election for another year president joseph kabila's second and final term ended in december last year but he refused to step down delaying the vote Elections were due to take place this year under a transitional deal aimed at avoiding bloodshed. But the vote has been postponed till 2019, sparking more violent protests. The protesters blame the police for chaos in some parts of the country. Police yetu haikufunzwa, inayu inajua kaa haikufunzwa. Nibitu venye habia kuwaka ta wapi mudunia mzima. Police upige civile mwenyana, bunduki regle masasi hivi. Aple ne, habia kuwaka. Tuna regle tesa. Kabila, who took over the DRC on his father's assassination in 2001, won successive elections in 2016 and 2011. He is constitutionally barred from running for a third term, but in May 2016, the Constitutional Court declared he could remain head of state until his successor is elected. Worried about a fresh outbreak of political violence, the international community has pressed for a vote to choose a new leader. Bureau Report, ANN7. The trial of a protest leader who spearheaded demonstrations in Morocco resumed in a packed courtroom in the city of Casablanca. Nasseri Zafzafi faces a death penalty for allegedly undermining the internal security of the state. Scores of people fill the courtroom in the city of Casablanca. They are here to support protest leader Nasser Zef Zafi, who has been in detention since May. The 39-year-old is accused of undermining the internal security of the state. He appeared in a brief hearing in a packed courtroom. Zef Zafi is a flag bearer for the protest movement that rocked northern Morocco earlier this year. He is standing trial alongside 30 other protesters. His co-accused could face up to 20 years in prison while he is at risk of life imprisonment. Some of their supporters held a rally before the hearing, demanding their release. الأحرار والمناضلين في هذه البلاد بأن هذه المحاكمات للأحرار والمناضلين ديال حراك الريف هي محاكمات لكل الشعب المغربي التواق للتحرر وكل أحرار الشعب المغربي المطالبين بحقوق اقتصادية شماعية Months of protest engulfed northern Morocco following the death of a fisherman. The largely peaceful demonstrations snowballed from grievances over poverty into a major challenge to the authorities in the kingdom. In response, security forces launched a crackdown, arresting the alleged leaders of the mainly young protesters in May and June. Twenty other defendants arrested over the protests appeared for a fourth hearing in a separate trial in the same court. In addition, the Casablanca court also heard the case of journalist Hamid Al Madoui, who was accused of failing to inform the authorities of an attempt to harm state security over the protests. Bureau Report, ANN7.
fighting in the pivotal World War II battle of El Alamein may have stopped 75 years ago, but Egypt is now waging another war against a hidden enemy, which are landmines. On a recent visit by foreign officials, personnel from the military Western Desert Mine Clearance Regiment uh, swept detectors across the stretch of, of sand as they showcased the uh, painstaking work it takes to remove the deadly legacy left behind by the Axis and Allied troops. Troops. The troops were wrestling for control along the Mediterranean coast. It's a battle that should have ended with World War II. But 75 years later, a deadly struggle continues in a northwestern corner of Egypt. The enemy, long buried landmines that still pack a deadly punch. Today, some 2,680 square kilometers are thought to be contaminated by explosives left scattered following the decisive 1942 Battle of Al Alamein. The Egyptian military's Western Desert Mine Clearance Regiment gave a demonstration of their meticulous demining work. <laughs> بعد ما بيخش الدمينر يشتغل الراجل السويبر يمسح الارض اي حاجة الجهاز بيقول له ان هنا في حاجة بيعلم مكانها ببيرة احمر Egyptian officials say the mines are standing in the way of the region's economic development but they also exact a more human toll at the Matro Artificial Limb Center funded by the EU and UN doctors engineer artificial limbs and legs to replace those claimed by the mines. ولا لو واحد في البلد بس كيف ما قلت لك هنا أو ما كان مريح يتحمل يمكن ست شهور أربع شهور بس بالنسبة لي في الصحراء كنا نقعد شهر أو شهر ونص نبوس أني ماشي في رامل ماشي في الصحراء ماشي في طوب ويتعب الزهاز يبوس على طول يعني كن كل شهر أو شهر ونص الصيان. In 2014, the European Union donated 4.7 million euros to anti-mine efforts in Al Alamein that led to a decrease in incidents with just one so far in 2017. It also funded awareness campaigns at school programs like this one. Kids learn to recognize mines and the dangers they pose. كل حاجة احنا شفناها دلوقتي استفدنا منها حاجات كتير جدا والأول هي ان احنا عرفنا اشكال الالغام وعرفنا ازاي نتعامل معاها وفهمنا يعني ايه لغة وفهمنا ازاي ازاي ما حدش يجي يمر While demining efforts continue, officials hope education can protect this new generation from the lethal remnants of the past. Bureau report, ANN7. The once teeming Jewish area of Moroccan tourist gem Marrakesh is seeing its fortunes revived as visitors, including many from Israel, flock to experience its unique culture and history. In the courtyard of the Lazama Synagogue at the heart of the historic Jewish quarter of Marrakesh, Isaac Ohayon is delivering an impassioned history lesson. The businessman wants this place of worship, built at the time of the Spanish Inquisition in 1492, to come alive for his tour group. C'est une synagogue qui était une école, vous voyez, ce qu'il y a en haut, en bas, c'était des classes. Il y avait plus de 450 élèves. Tous les villages berbères, à partir de Marrakech jusqu'au plus, plus haut que Zagora, il y avait 250 villages. Il y avait plein d'enfants. In the classroom turned museum exhibits, photos show the history of the community now scattered between France, North America and especially Israel. Before their mass immigration following the Second World War, Morocco was home to the largest Jewish community in North Africa. Once numbering between 250 and 300,000 people, today fewer than 3,000 remain. C'est des familles qui viennent entièrement, c'est des enfants des familles, que les parents ne sont plus là, ils veulent aller voir leurs traces, leurs origines, d'où ils viennent, leurs parents, tout ça. Since the restoration of the Mela, 
The name given to Jewish neighborhoods in Moroccan cities, visitors have flocked the place. The renovation program launched more than two years ago has already received a budget of 17.5 million euros. Some alleyways have even had Hebrew versions of their names added to the street sign. For tourists, many of whom travel from Israel, it's a journey back to their roots. I was uh, born in Morocco, in Fez. I lived in Morocco when I was uh, four years old, to Israel. And in the last 10 years, I'm two leader in Morocco. Morocco maintains no official economic or diplomatic ties with the Jewish state, and the subject remains sensitive. But that hasn't prevented tourism or business from flourishing. This year, according to the Moroccan press, trade between the two countries reached more than $4 million per month. Bureau Report, ANN7.